Hi, my name is Dario Resendez, Product Manager for Monitors here at ICANN, and welcome to today's edition of ICANN's Tech Corner. So today we're going to be talking about the ICANN Saga S7H. The S7H is the first monitor in our new line of monitors called Saga. So the reason we came up with the name Saga is because uh, Saga is the Norse goddess of storytelling. So we figured what better name for our monitors, which are tools that help you tell your story, than Saga, the goddess of storytelling. So the Saga S7H, whenever we were designing this monitor, we thought, well, there's not uh, many affordable or any affordable high-bright monitors out there, and they're all very big and bulky and expensive. So we wanted to come out with a monitor that was high-bright, slim, lightweight, and more affordable than anything out there. So that's how the Saga S7H was born. So the Saga S7H is uh, a high-bright monitor. It has a bright, uh, brightness of 700 nits, which is about twice as bright as your standard monitor. So in addition to that, it also has 3G SDI in and out up to 1080p. It also has HDMI in and out up to 4K, and as well as your headphone output and a USB out as well that's for uh, software updates, and you can power you know, various 5-volt devices with it as well, which, is, which comes in really handy. Um, also, it's surrounded by uh, quarter 20 mounts, so you get one on top, one on the bottom, one on the left, one on the right, which give you a lot more mounting options whenever you're mounting it to your rig or however you want to mount it. Um, also on the top, you have four function buttons, which uh, allow you to uh, map the four most used functions that you use to the four buttons on top. So that way you can uh, enable your functions quick and easy whenever you're in the field, whenever you're shooting. You can quickly just enable false color, disable false color, or whatever feature you want to use. Um, as well as for menu control and thing like that, things like that, you have the uh, scroll wheel here on the top. Um, the monitor itself supports two battery plates. It comes included with two uh, Canon E6 battery plates. It can work off of one battery, but since it's a high bright monitor, it, it sucks up a little bit more juice. We figured uh, adding two batteries uh, lets you just run the monitor uninterrupted for longer. So what I'm going to do now is show you guys the menu so you can kind of see exactly what you're going to get with the S7H. So I'm going to press the scroll wheel down and it's going to bring up the menu. And the first option that comes up is the guides option. So I'm going to go in there and this monitor supports uh, various different type of guides. So the first option that you see here is uh, for your standard guides. So you have the 80%, 90%, 15 by 9, 4 by 3, and various other uh, different aspect ratio guides. But it also supports custom, which allows you to customize the vertical and horizontal line to whatever you want. It also has the crosshair option, which all that does is adds a little crosshair right in the center of the screen. Helps you for framing. And then it also has the grids, which uh, splits up the screen into quadrants, into uh, you know, four quadrants, or it keeps on going up from there until it just disappears once you know, they get kind of small there. Uh, from there, we can go back, and the next option is going to be the video config, which gives you your standard brightness, contrast, chroma, sharpness, tint, and uh, color temperature options. But it also has the backlight option here, which is set default to high, which is going to be around 700 nits. But if I turn this down, it goes to standard, and it brings it down to about 350 nits, which is you know standard monitor brightness just about. So if you want to save battery or you're working indoors, you can put it into standard. Uh, the aspect ratio option, which allows you to, to switch between the supported aspect ratios of the monitor. So you got full, 16 by 9, 15 by 9, 4 by 3, and then the various other aspect ratios that the monitor supports. But it also supports the user option, which lets, which lets you adjust the vertical and horizontal screen of the image to whatever you want. So if there's an aspect ratio that's not supported here, or whatever the case, you can go in there and adjust that yourself. The next option is the system config, which gives you your standard you know, system configuration options like the uh, OSD language, so what, what language do you want the on-screen display to be, the OSD duration, which is how long do you want that menu to be up before it turns itself off, the OSD transparency, 
Uh, but a cool little thing here is the menu setup, which gives you five users that can customize the menu how they want. So anytime they come back to using the monitor, it can be set up exactly how they had at the time before. Um, you also have the standard system reset that puts everything back to default. Uh, flip control, so the monitor supports image flip. Uh, so you can flip the image you know, vertically or, or horizontally as well, or both. But it also gives you the option of uh, telling the monitor how to handle the on-screen display whenever you're in flip mode. So you can tell the on-screen display to stay right side up while the image flips, or you can tell it that you want the OSD to flip with the image. Uh, also, as you can see there, it has a low battery alarm, which tells you when your batteries are about to die, which can come in very handy. Uh, as you can see here, the next one down there is the function setup. So in the function setup, you can actually tell the monitor what functions you want to map to those four function buttons on top of the monitor. So right now you can see what it is, uh, what those buttons are mapped to. So function one is mapped to zooming, function two to peaking, three to false color, and four to waveform. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the, all the supported features of the monitor so you can kind of get an idea of what the monitor supports. So if you look at function one, the first one uh, is zooming. So since the LCD panel of this monitor is a native HD panel, if you feed it HD footage, you can use the zooming function to zoom into the image to make it larger to make sure you're in focus or to look at details a little bit closer. The next uh, uh, function is audio meters. So that'll show you the audio levels on the top of the screen, uh, whether they're coming in through HDMI or SDI as well. The next option is the 5D Mark II record mode. Uh, that's a record mode. Like you, you enable that if you're still using that camera, and it actually just uh, it uh, allows the monitor to handle the footage that's coming out of the camera in a, in a better way, in a more efficient way. Uh, pixel to pixel, which is a very important function, especially if you're going to be using this monitor for 4K. So since the LCD panel is high definition, you put you know you feed it 4K footage. Um, it's going to be really hard to focus. So you can always enable pixel to pixel in order to, be, uh, to, to get in there at, and, and see the image in, in a one-to-one -one aspect so you can you know, judge whether you're in focus or not. The next function is the backlight. So you can quickly adjust the backlight brightness to higher standard like I showed you earlier. You can map it to a button so you can quickly go back and forth. You have check field, so in, you know, it helps you calibrate your monitor with color bars, which is also a very important feature. You have HV delay, guides, so you can map the guides option to that one function button if you want. You set it up in the other menu, but then you can map it to one of these buttons. The crosshair, once again, you can map it to one of the buttons as well as the grids. Uh, from there you have peaking, which helps you for focusing, puts a red outline around your subject. Uh, you can also go in there and adjust the thickness of the lines as well to make it easier to see. Uh, false color for exposure to make sure you get the, the image right the first time. Uh, clip guides, which is also for exposure. It kind of shows, it's sort of like a zebra type function where certain parts of the image blink whenever they're overexposed or underexposed. And then you have underscan, DSLR scaling, and the waveform option. So the S7H also supports waveform. And we're back to the zooming. So right now you, you kind of got a taste of all the features that the monitor supports now. Um, but if I go out of here, the monitor also supports uh, firmware updates. So it has a USB port on it for firmware updates. Uh, so in the future, we'll probably be adding a few more features or, or things like that. So always uh, keep an eye on our website. If there's any future firmware updates, that's where they'll be. Now I'm going to show you guys what's included in the box. So this is the packaging for the Saga S7H. Whenever you get it, the monitor comes shipped in this little cool uh, neoprene sleeve. This protects the monitor on the way to you, and it also helps protect it whenever you throw it in your camera bag or you got in the field with it. It's a, it's a nice little accessory to have with it. So there you go. Uh, this is the monitor. It's got a screen protector on it with a little message telling you to be careful whenever you remove that. On the back, you're going to see the dual battery plates. Dual Canon E6 battery plates are included and already attached on the monitor. 
I'm um, gonna turn it around here and you can see the power button as well as the function buttons. You have the scroll wheel here for the menu as well as the input and exit button. So the input button switches between HDMI and SDI and the exit button gets you out of the menu quickly if you ever need to get in and get out of the menu. I'm gonna turn it around to the bottom and you're gonna see the, S the 3G SDI input and output, the uh, headphone port as well as the four pin mini XLR power input. Then on the other side you have the HDMI out and the HDMI in as well as the USB port for upgrades, for firmware upgrades. You can also see the shoe mounts there, there, on the top, and then the other side as well. So that is the physical aspects of the monitor as you can see there. And then also in the box you get a nice heavy duty shoe mount. So as you can see here, you can also it's a really nice shoe mount, uh, nice and heavy duty. It's going to have no problem holding up this monitor. And then what you're also going to get in this little black pouch is a mini XLR to uh, PTAP cable. So you can power it either via DV battery plate like you saw in the back with the uh, Canon E6 and you can also power it with any uh, DTAP power source as well. So even though the monitor is included with two Canon E6 battery plates, it supports our BP5 battery plates, so you can also you can go on our website or go to any one of our dealers and purchase additional battery plates. We have the Sony L-Series ones available, Canon 900 series, the uh, Panasonic D54, the Nikon EL15. We have all those different type of battery plates available that you can purchase as accessories in order to just you know, be able to use whatever battery system you're already using. So this has been the Saga S7H monitor. It's a 7 inch high bright monitor, supports 4K, 3G SDI. Um, if you need any more information on this product or any other product from ICANN, please visit www.icancorp.com. My name is Dario Resendez. This has been ICANN's Tech Corner. Thanks.